Okay, so today we are going to talk about sepsis and shock. A very high yield topic. We'll discuss that what is sepsis, what is shock, what is the difference between them. We'll discuss that how do you assess and approach a patient with sepsis. We'll discuss that how do you treat both of them. We'll discuss that what is shock index. First of all, what is sepsis? Sepsis is a life-threatening, dysregulated host response to an infection. It means that body is carrying an infection. Normally, whenever there is infection in the body, body has a regulated response against it, a regulated immune response to fight this infection. But in the condition of sepsis, the host response is dysregulated. Body is confused and the response from the body is also confused. In that condition, the response of the body instead of killing the microbes is actually damaging the body. That is sepsis, a dysregulated host response to an infection. These patients of sepsis after some time usually go into shock. What is shock? Shock is defined as sepsis with patient requiring vasopressors to maintain mean arterial pressure greater than or equal to 65 mm of Hg. It means that the body is unable to maintain the blood pressures now. The host response is so dysregulated that it is unable to maintain the blood pressure. When it is unable to maintain the blood pressure, it is unable to perfuse the vital organs like brain. So the, to maintain a normal blood pressure, you have to give norepinephrine, dopamine from outside. If to maintain the blood pressure, you have to give vasopressors from outside. That is a shock. Another definition of shock is that sepsis in combination with lactate buildup, lactate greater than 2 millimole per liter despite adequate fluid resuscitation. Remember that in shock, body is unable to maintain the blood pressure. When body is unable to maintain the blood pressure, body is unable to perfuse the vital organs, perfuse the organs of the body. Whenever, whenever there is low perfusion to the organs, there is low oxygen delivery to those organs. Low oxygen delivery to those organs will make the cells go into anaerobic respiration. And anaerobic respiration produces acids like lactic acid in blood. So whenever there is low perfusion, there is lack of delivery of oxygen to the organs and those organs and those cells go into anaerobic respiration and that anaerobic respiration produces lactic acid and there is buildup of lactate in the blood. You give fluids from outside to maintain the blood pressure, but still there is lactate buildup. That is called as shock. So sepsis is a dysregulated host response to an infection, but in shock, the patient is unable to maintain the blood pressure in the presence of sepsis. So that is the definition of sepsis and shock. Now, whenever a patient presents to you and you think that that patient is in sepsis, the first thing you should look for is the signs of infection, the sources of infection. Look for productive cuff, Look for offensive oozing wound. Look for burning maturation. If that patient is having any one of these signs or symptoms, it means there is source of infection. And that source of infection can lead to dysregulated response from the body leading to sepsis. Have low threshold for sepsis. How will you have low threshold for sepsis? Early recognition of sepsis is very important. Why? Because early treatment produces much more better results. Every hour delay in the treatment of sepsis will increase mortality. So early recognition and early treatment of sepsis is very important. Have low threshold for assessing sepsis. If the patient all of a sudden develops cognitive impair or communication difficulties or the patient is delirious, usually the old patient who all of a sudden totally get altered in time, place and person, they usually are in sepsis and they have an infection source. Patients who are immunocompromised, chemotherapy patients, IV drug users, these are immunosuppressed patients. They can easily get infection and go into sepsis, have low threshold for them. Patients who had surgery, patients who are pregnant or who gave birth have low threshold because they have been operated. These are the patients who have been exposed to bacteria and have a high risk of going into sepsis. Indwelling lines, these IV lines, if they are, they are in place for a longer period of time, can get infected with staph aureus or any foreign material like tampons or anything in the body can lead to sepsis, a source of infection. After assessing a patient with sepsis, take detailed history and perform detailed examination. In examination, look for capillary refill time. The capillary refill time in these patients will be delayed. 
Why? Because there is lack of perfusion to the organs. The body is unable to maintain blood pressure. Therefore, the capillary refill time will be delayed. And look for mottled ashen skin. This is a picture showing mottled ashen skin due to lack of perfusion to the organs. Look for the conscious level. These patients will be altered. They will be altered in time, place, and person. Localize infection. Look for infection wounds hidden by dressing, bed sores, IV lines. And check the vitals. Check heart rate, blood pressure, saturation, temperature, do ECG. Urine output monitoring is very important. Now, on the basis of these vitals, we will classify the patient that whether that patient is in a high risk category, whether that patient is in a moderate risk category, or that patient is in low risk category. These are the vitals that we base our classification upon. We assess the risk and we classify the patient. Now, what are the patients who are in high risk criteria? High risk criteria include that if the patient has evidence of altered mental status, if the respiratory rate is high, greater than 24, usually these patients are having acidosis because of the lactate buildup. And what body tries to do to compensate is to increase the respiratory drive to wash out carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is an acid. So they wash out carbon dioxide and therefore respiratory rate is high. New requirement of FiO2 greater than 40% to keep saturation above 92%. To maintain the saturation above 92%, you have to give oxygen to these patients. Systolic blood pressure less than 90. That is a very important point. Patients having systolic blood pressure less than 90 mm of Ig are in a high risk criteria. Heart rate greater than 130 is a high risk criteria. Urine output nil for 18 hours or zero, less than 0 0.5 ml per kg if the patient is catheterized. It means that the urine output is very low. Why urine output is very low? Because the perfusion to the kidneys is low. Because the blood pressure is low. Because the patient is in shock. So that is a high risk criteria. Mottled ashen cyanotic skin as I showed you in the previous picture. Coming to the moderate to high risk criteria. Moderate to high risk criteria will not have a full evidence of altered mental status, but there will be a deterioration of the functional status of the patient. Maybe that patient was walking around and now that patient is bedridden. That is a deterioration in the functional status. Respiratory rate of 21 to 24 as compared to greater than 24 in the high risk. Rigors and hypothermia because the body is not being perfused so that patient is getting hypothermia. Systolic blood pressure between 91 to 100 compare it with the high risk criteria where it was less than 90. Heart rate of 91 to 130 beats per minute or many urethmia. Urine output nil for 12 to 18 hours. 0 0.5 to 0 0.1 ml per kg per hour if the patient is catheterized. Recent surgery or immunosuppression. These are the risk moderate to high risk criteria, and that one is a high risk criteria. If any one of the high risk criteria is present, that patient is a high risk patient. Or if the two of the moderate to high risk criteria are present, that patient is also a high risk patient. Now try to understand this point. If a patient fulfills one of the high risk criteria, that patient is a high risk patient. Or if the patient fulfills two of the moderate to high risk criteria points, that patient is also put into high risk category. Now, what are the patients who are moderate to high risk patients? These are the patients who fulfill one of the moderate to high risk criteria points. And low risks are the one who do not fulfill any of those points. Now, if the patient is high risk or moderate to high risk, you send investigation, send serial arterial blood gases or venous blood gases. Send blood culture, send electrolytes, send inflammatory markers like CRP, blood clotting profile, CBC, LFT, RFT. LFT is RFTs to see organ perfusion. Usually these patients have low perfusion to the vital organs and therefore they are going into organ failure due to shock. Source directed labs must be taken like acetic tap to see the bacteria in that. Wound culture, sputum or urine culture, wherever you can find the source of infection, look for that source, detect that organism and kill it. Now, coming to a very high yield topic, shock index. Sometimes it happens that you have a patient and in that patient, you are suspecting that that patient might go into shock. But that patient is having a normal blood pressure. How would you know that this patient is a high risk patient who can go into shock after some time? For that patient, you calculate shock index. Now, how do you calculate shock index? 
basically whenever the body is going into shock the compensatory mechanisms of the body are activated compensatory mechanism include increase heart rate when the when the organs are not being perfused properly the heart rate increases and body tries to vasoconstrict these vessels these are actually the last ditch responses of the body no body tries to increase the systemic vascular resistance by vasoconstricting the vessels and increasing the heart rate now what you do is that you calculate shock index by taking the heart rate in the numerator and systolic blood pressure in the denominator if the patient is having increased heart rate you will get a value of greater than 0.9 even if the blood pressure is normal the heart rate will be high and if the patient is having a heart rate and you calculate shock index and that shock index is greater than 0.9 it means that after that sometime this patient might go into shock this patient is highly susceptible to go into shock that is shock index now coming to the treatment of sepsis the most important thing in the treatment of sepsis is giving antibiotics usually when we start the treatment we do not know about the exact organisms because blood cultures or urine culture or the wound swab that takes time so we start empiric therapy and we plan the empiric therapy such that we cover gram positive organisms including MRSA, gram negative organism including the highly resistant like pseudomonas e coli and also anaerobes and we cover them by giving third generation cephalosporin like cefotexime cefotexime cefriaxone they cover the gram positives gram negatives can be covered by gentamicin anaerobes cover can be covered by metronidazole so these are all the antimicrobials that can be used in the empiric therapy of sepsis other drugs that can be used are by parcelin tezobactam imipenem miropenem these can be used in empiric therapy and it is important to give antibiotics within three hours of presentation before even the labs are back start the empiric therapy every one hour delay in the start of the treatment with antibiotics increases mortality by 7.6 percent that's why i was stressing on the point that early recognition and early treatment of sepsis is very important now coming to the fluids if the systolic blood pressure is less than 90 or lactate is greater than 2 you give 500 ml bolus of normal saline 0.9 percent over 15 minutes if the systolic blood pressure is less than 90 give bolus fluid 500 ml over 15 minutes and if there is no improvement after two boluses then you should inform your seniors then you should consider use of vasopressors and ionotropes vasopressors like norepinephrine dopamine norepinephrine decreases arrhythmia and it decreases mortality dopamine and norepinephrine combination is a vasopressor of choice in septic shock as i said that in septic shock the main problem is that body is unable to maintain the blood pressure so, so, to, so to maintain the blood pressure you have to give the vasopressors and what you can do is that rather increasing the dose of norepinephrine you can add vasopressin to it give oxygen if the saturation of oxygen is less than 92 percent go for a target of 94 to 98 percent if the patient has copd give 88 to 92 percent oxygen why to give less oxygen in copd patients i have talked about it in detail in my video on copd exacerbation treatment the link of that video is in the description below steroids steroids can be considered in the patients who have refractory shock there is a patient in which you are giving fluids you are giving escalating doses of vasopressors but that patient is unable to maintain the blood pressure such patients are eligible for steroids you can give hydrocortisone you can give fludricortisone fludricortisone is a mineralocorticoid it will help maintain the blood pressure both of them are steroids and they decrease mortality and such patients who are having refractory shock on escalating doses of vasopressors and not responding to it these patients must be given steroids and as i said that the lack of perfusion damages all the vital organs in the body body can go into acute kidney injury kidney damage due to lack of perfusion dic respiratory distress syndrome excessive pumping and the heart increased heart rate can lead to arrhythmias so you have to manage these acute complications but but the giving fluids giving antibiotics giving vasopressors correcting the perfusion correcting the blood pressure usually corrects all these complications in shock in summary we talked about what is sepsis what is shock we talked about how to assess a patient we talked about high risk criteria moderate risk criteria you assess the risk you send the labs and then you calculate shock index in the patient who are having normal blood pressure but you are suspecting that that patient will go into shock 
you give treatment with antibiotics, you give fluids, you give vasopressors, you give oxygen, you give steroids, and you manage the acute complications. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.